sitting here in Kristina Hamn, I realized I forgot to film an intro. So what's happening is that I'm moving from Norway to back to Sweden, where I'm from. And I'm doing kind of a two-step move. So I'm moving all of my stuff to Stockholm first. Uh, and then in a few months, I'm going to come and pick them up again and drive them up to Östersund, which will be my, my final, uh, not resting place, uh, but where I live. So uh, we have the Model 3 long range. We have the Kalix aero loader roof box on top, the one that looks like uh, an alien head or something like that. And we have a trailer uh, behind us that's filled with all my my moving uh, stuff or most of it at least it's about um, 550 kilometers or something like that maybe 650 <laughs> i'm not even sure drive to stockholm yeah i think that's a good enough intro so uh, then we'll get back to past liners who will talk to you at different charging stops and stuff so we're about to get started with the trip to stockholm with the trailer and everything so we're gonna reset the trip that's been called Stockholm forever uh, probably have about eight hours of driving let's see how it goes but first we gotta check the tire pressure on the trailer the computer says we'll make it to Karlstad with 19% I'm not so sure uh, we may have to take one of the earlier stops but it's been a long time since I drove with the trailer so I'm not really sure about consumption and range and everything so uh, we'll just get started and we probably have I don't know, eight hours maybe ahead of us. So uh, tag along for the ride. Here we are, we made it to Grums. Uh, we arrived with 9%, I think, uh, and as you can see, we're already at 37. Uh, looking at the stacks, stats, stacks, the stats for that leg, uh, 204 kilometers, 272 watt hours per kilometer consumption. And yeah, I mean, it's decent for, uh, for driving with the trailer, I think. Uh, I was actually expecting less, uh, more consumption and less range. Um, so it's pretty good. I'm just charging up here so I can make it to the version 3 supercharger in Kristina Hamn. We're at 9... oh, 10% arrival. So uh, I'm talking too much. I need to get moving. See you in Kristina Hamn. So we're just about to pull into the Kristina Hamn supercharger and charging. And both of... Or like two of the trailer friendly stalls were covered and then I had to... would have to kind of navigate in between them, but one of the... Other drivers here uh, moved their car. They said they weren't getting great speeds on this one, but we're climbing up here at 16%. I overcharged last time for talking too much and being on the phone for a bit. But 210, 200 and something, that's good for me. I'm gonna have some food anyways and rearrange uh, some of the, the packing. So uh, it's gonna be a deep charge here. I haven't decided what the next stop will be. Uh, just for the short stint from uh, Grums to Christina Hamn. 65 kilometers, 275 watt hours per kilometer, and our average for the total trip so far, 274. Uh, looking pretty good. It's gonna chill out for a bit, and we're actually climbed up all the way to 240. So, looks like we're having a good session. And we're just about finished here. Uh, we're at almost 90% state of charge, but the price is right now 440 Swedish crowns. That's about, you know, 44, 45 euros. Uh, and we've added 53 kilowatt hours. So the price here is 810 per kilowatt hour. Again, that's about 80 cents, 80 euro cents or something like that per kilowatt hour. So it's really expensive. We're gonna go to the supercharger in Strängnäs. Uh, estimated 12% arrival. Uh, after that, we don't really have any more uh, superchargers uh, before our destination. So, and it's pretty sparse here. So if I see uh, around <clears throat> Arboga that uh, I'm running out of estimated arrival, then I'll have to top up there a bit. I mean, I'm sure there are other charges here, but eh, might as well stay on the supercharger network for now. So uh, I'm gonna unplug and get back on the road. We'll see about this by the way because I'm not sure when you drive with the trailer uh, the car obviously compensates for uh, consumption and it tries to update 
its estimates all the time, but I'm not sure if it uh, compensates for speed as well. Because I'm driving in, it's mostly 110 zones all the way to, to Sringness, and I'm driving, you know, roughly 82 kilometers an hour GPS speed. Um, and I don't know if that's taken into account when it estimates your uh, arrival state of charge when you're driving with the trailer. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Currently it says 13% uh, and I'll update you a bit later. We're just driving through Rebro now. We've been on the road for, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe or so. And as we can see the estimated state of charge arrival is kind of creeping up uh, from 13 to 17 now even though we have wet surface on the road. Uh, we should increase in consumption, so I think uh, we can conclude that when you drive with a trailer, uh, the calculations don't account for the speed you're required to drive in your region. So in Sweden and Norway, the maximum speed with the trailer is 80 km per hour, but it looks like the system is uh, estimating that we'll drive the speed limit. So, uh, you know, 100, 110, 120 eventually as we get closer to Stockholm. So, one of the things about towing with, uh, with a Tesla, if you didn't know, is that you can't use autopilot. You can only use adaptive cruise control, uh, which is great in its own right. So you can just cruise along and don't need to, you know, constantly have your foot on the, on the not the gas, the juice pedal. But, something I wish existed from, uh, from Tesla, actually a few things, but just in terms of transporting stuff like this. First of all, I wish there was a, a way to tell the car that there is a roof box uh, on top, so we could use that to calculate uh, range, to give it, you know, reduce it by 10% or however much it is. Um, but also uh, the possibility of using some sort of autopilot light, perhaps, uh, when you're towing. Uh, so I understand Tesla's decision to not have autopilot active when you're towing, partly because I guess it blocks some of the sensors, especially behind. Uh, but also in terms of the jerkiness uh, that might happen when you when you drive an autopilot with phantom braking and not handling merges very well and if you want to disengage it at least in Europe it requires quite a bit of force on the steering wheel that may cause you to, to jerk and get some unwanted motion in, in the entire um, train so to speak um, but I wish there was a like a autopilot light or something where it was just lane assist so when I'm cruising along like this that I could just plop it on realize that it's not going to do some of the stuff that autopilot uh, does but at least it would keep me in the lane and I wouldn't have to constantly you know have my hand and focus on the on the steering wheel or always your hands on the steering wheel but you get what I mean um, but that's it um, estimated arrival right now 18% uh, and that's even though we increased our speed a little bit still within you know legal boundaries um, and it's wet it's wetter than before so um, again Probably, most likely, Tesla is not accounting for the fact that you're driving under the speed limit when you have uh, a trailer attached to your vehicle. So we made it to Strängnäs through the rain. We arrived with 11% at last. We've been charging for five minutes and we already got 23% into the battery. This is our last charging, so I'm going to charge pretty deep again. I need some buffer when I get to my destination. This is an installation that, that has V3, but it doesn't have any trailer-friendly stalls, so I had to kind of pull in sideways here. So I'm covering a few stalls, actually. Uh, actually, four. Not great. The stats for that trip, since it started raining pretty heavily, 277 watt hours per kilometer per... <laughs> can't speak anymore. And we drove a total of 188 kilometers, two hours and 20 minutes. Still fairly low. I mean, the average is up at 275. Maybe I'm uh, very off here when I say that it's low, but to me it is uh, compared to previous experiences with, with trailers. And especially as heavy loaded as this one, plus the roof box and plus stuff in the car, plus rain. Uh, and it's only nine degrees Celsius outside. It took us 24 minutes to go from 11% to 81%. That's some decent speed right there. So I'm gonna unplug and get going. I guess you'll join me out in the lovely weather this time. Uh, one, two, three. There's our lovely trailer. Good parking. Day. 
I was really tired yesterday, so I just uh, arrived at my destination, went to bed, and slept. Now I'm on my way to unload the stuff I have in the trailer. A uh, quick look at basically the, the last charging stop. Uh, we drove roughly 100 kilometers, 262 watt hours per kilometers consumption. Uh, our total is down to 273 watt hours per kilometer uh, in terms of consumption. But uh, now we're heading to unload the trailer. I'm uh, gonna pick up a couch and then I'm driving another three hours or so going south from Stockholm uh, to do some other stuff. So the journey continues. Uh, I'm really enjoying driving through the sun here with the beautiful fall colors uh, and I'm driving in the darkness and rain as last night. Oof. All right, let's uh, get to our unloading stop. Uh, and I'll catch you back when we're on the road heading south again. Mr. Director, I will do anything you want me to do. Hey, Mr. Director, anything, anything for you. I can sing, I can dance, I can sing, I can dance, I can learn the song. It's now a few hours later. Uh, I dropped off all the stuff I had in the trailer, I picked up a couch and I'm heading down to our cabin where I'm going to drop off uh, the couch and some other stuff. Locked in at 85 km per hour, as usual, we're heading to the supercharger in Sillekrog, 20% arrival, I overcharged a bit just to be safe. And then we're going to cruise along for maybe another two hours or so, uh, going south from Stockholm. Yeah, so we're driving E4 for a bit. Uh, I'm hopping on E22, heading south along the coast, uh, and uh, you know I'll, I'll talk to you a bit along the way, and then I'll see you at the cabin, where I randomly found a person on Facebook who could help me carry the couch into the into the cabin. Uh, so there's a there's a person coming from a from a small town nearby uh, to help me with that. So I'm really grateful. Things are kind of coming together after having a few days of. Just pure chaos, packing, driving, um, almost forgetting the winter tires, all of that. Uh, so now I hope it's just smooth sailing. And then uh, tomorrow morning I'm gonna start driving back towards Oslo. So it's gonna be a longer drive uh, tomorrow, I think, probably upwards of nine and a half, ten hours or something like that. Hmm. Nothing more to report. Bye! charter at the cabin so I can roll in there with 5% and we'll be fine. So we're just gonna find our way here. I don't think I've ever been to this charger before <clears throat> so we'll see if we have some trailer friendly stalls, if people have parked in a way so that I can use the trailer friendly stalls or if I have to you know move around like I did uh, at the last charging stop which I didn't film uh, in Silly Krog, just a quick one where I had to share a charger so I just ate and got out of there as soon as possible uh, to uh, get to this charger in Norrköping. Just pulling in here with a healthy 8% state of charge. Uh, seems to be a pretty busy supercharger with, of course, a lot of the trailer friendly stalls occupied. So let's see if we can find a spot. There we go, we found a stall that we didn't have to chair. Share? Uh, share, can't even speak anymore. Uh, let's see what we ramp up to. It's a version two installation. Um, either we stay here a bit longer and we go all the way, or we stop at the version three supercharger closer to my final destination. So the trip coming here, 87 kilometers, 267 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, we were cruising a bit faster together with some other cars uh, hovering around 90. Um, 
not very much more to go. The total trip so far, 773 kilometers, 268 watt hours per kilometer average consumption, which is fine. Uh, I think the biggest hurdle uh, on this trip is the price on the superchargers in Sweden. Let's see what the price is here. Uh, we're paying seven crowns and 90 euro, as we say. So roughly 80 euro cents or something like that. Started to rain. Uh, gotta expect a bit of a higher consumption going the last stretch, but I'm just gonna chill in the car. I uh, got some, well, I had some Algrens bilar and coffee. I don't have anything right now except for water. Um, yeah, we'll charge up. I'll see you back on the road. There we go. We're up to 141 kilowatts. Not bad, not great, uh, but at least I get uh, a stall for myself, not sharing uh, the juice. Um, and we only need another 30% or so. I'll give myself maybe a 10% buffer since it started to rain. Um, but then we'll get going on the last, finally, <laughs> the last stretch for, well, just today really. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to drive another 10 hours. So I get a bit of rest at least. Uh, I'm going to jump in the cold water, maybe jump in the sauna, mm, light a fire, who knows. So uh, let's get up to, what's that, like 35% or so? Um, no, I can't do math. 45% and get back on the road as soon as possible. I'm not really sure what happened here, but suddenly the charging speed dropped to 60 kilowatts and there is no one sharing with me. That's the stall back there. Uh, that's on the same cabinet. So, uh, hmm. Luckily, I only need another 5%, so I think I'm just going to leave it like this and then we'll get rolling on the last last leg. Uh, okay, something really strange happened. It was at 60 and I was just like, oh, I might as well just turn off the, the AC for now to let as much juice as possible go into the battery. And as soon as I did, it just jumped up to 144 and now I got the, the AC on again or climate control and it's just pegged at 144. I have. Absolutely no idea what happened. Maybe the entire station got overloaded or something. And I think one of the, the person from the car next to me that's on a different cabinet uh, came over and looked at the number on my my stall. So maybe it was something that hit everyone. Um, but regardless, we have a 12% arrival. So let's just unplug and start driving. happening we're going like 60 to 80 in a hundred zone for no apparent reason it's like I'm back in Norway so you grin on 